Microphones can be a little confusing. There's a lot more to think about than does it have RGB before you take the plunge and purchase a mic well over hundred pounds. You've got polar patterns, you've got condenser or dynamic, you've got how is it powered? There's so many questions that need to be answered. Now in one of my previous videos, I lightly touched on how microphones can be powered via an external amp or a mixing desk. But today we're gonna to be checking out the Fifine K658 dynamic USB microphone. So the packaging on the box is nice and robust, kind of like a heavy duty cardboard. So if you throw this box around, nothing much is gonna happen than a few dents or scratches on the external surface of the box. Now let's check out the product features that's listed on the box. USB, plug and play with a PC, laptop, MacBook, and apparently a PS4. Mute, a tap to mute sensor with an LED indicator, nice and simple. Monitoring, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for real-time monitoring. Sounds, delivers a warm and smooth sound without extra noise. Gain, easily adjust the mic gain by turning the dial on the mic. And the most important thing for a gamer in this day and age, lighting. The RGB lighting creates a unique atmosphere for streaming. Now let's jump straight into the unboxing and let's see what you get with the microphone. So once again, the packaging here is really secure. There's phone stuck the inside on the top piece of the box. So if you shake everything inside the box, it's not gonna hit the roof of the box and damage any products or anything that might be inside. An included user guide, which shows you how to set up the mic for Windows and Mac users. Really helpful as it also includes screenshots of what you need to do, which is a really slept on thing that a lot more brands need to be doing rather than just loads of text as instructions. So you get a nice and secure shock mount and the mic sits in, whether you have it on a boom arm over your desk using the included stand. A non-braided, but a nice cable, feels really high quality, metal tips on the ends, a USB-A to a USB-C cable to connect your mic to the computer, with an included Velcro cable tie, which has the company name on and is a, is a really nice touch. A simple three-legged desk stand that the shock mount screws into with feet that aren't glued or anything. So watch out when you have this thing, don't want any of these falling behind your desk or something as they'll probably get lost and you don't want it to be sitting unbalanced on your desk. A simple adapter that goes into the shock mount in order for it to clamp to the boom arm. And lastly, the mic itself. Now the base of the microphone is all metal. Um, I'm not too sure what metal it is. It's not listed anywhere on their website or anything that Amazon that I could see. So Fifine, if you could kind of tell the people what metal it is, it would be a nice kind of addition to the product but gives the microphone a nice, heavy, durable feel. There's also the dial to turn the gain on the microphone up and down with the touch sensitive mute button in the middle, which also features two colors depending on the mic status, green for open and red for muted. And on the flip side is the touch sensitive RGB button. Now it does state on the manual and on the website, I think it does say that the RGB cannot be changed on this microphone. Now that's the color, the patterns, anything on the microphone, the RGB is on or off, that's it, two options. And you can see on the underside where the USB-C port is to connect the cable to. And you can also see the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack where you plug in your headset and you get real-time monitoring of your microphone. Now the RGB is also around the bottom of the mic, which to me is, is quite weird because when this thing sits in the shock mount that you have to have it on, even if you connect it to a boom arm, the RGB is kind of diffused and taken over by this black shock mount. So you can't actually see a lot of it. It's still a nice touch to have but it could have been somewhere more visible, kind of like the HyperX Quadcast where they have it inside the actual mic itself. But yeah, this one, it's not really too visible once it sits in the shock mount. Setting the product up is nice and simple, as simple as it could be. You literally just get the USB-C cable, plug it into the bottom of the USB mic, and on the other end, just get the USB and plug it into any USB port. It could be USB 2.0, 3.0, or 3.1. Doesn't really matter. Windows instantly picks up the headphone jack on the back of speakers, and the microphone and that's it no software nothing needed to install simple plug and play so now just for reference you're listening to a rode pod mic which is how i record all of my videos how i talk in discord sometimes you'll see it on the stream or i use my astro microphone but all of these are plugged into my go xlr mixer which has effects post processing filters anything that i need to add on top of it it can all be done through the GoXLR and their software. Now, all of these combined together is well over three, 400 pounds. This is a proper studio podcasters kind of setup or a proper streamer setup, as I'd like to call myself. Now, I wouldn't change one thing in my setup. I'm very happy with my GoXLR. Pod mic works perfectly for the price range that it's included in. But one thing that I would love to upgrade really is the microphone. But you know what? For now, the pod mic is doing a job and it's doing a great job, that is. And what you're hearing now is the sound quality from the Fifine K658 no post processing no filters nothing added no software straight usb plug and play into my obs 
nothing else. As you can see from the image on screen, the EQ on the Fifine microphone is nicely balanced. It's a bit bassy, more than I would really recommend, but it kind of gives it that nice radio and podcaster feel. The midtones and the high end are really nicely balanced. There's not too much of anything. And overall just makes like a really nice, warm kind of tone for anyone's voice. The microphone has a cardioid poiler pattern, meaning that it has sensitivity to sounds coming from the front of it, and it doesn't really pick up background noise or anything from behind the microphone. The mute button works great and is simple feature and perfect for any unwanted interruptions during live stream or a call that you're in. So as you can hear now that I'm speaking, now, I only did encounter one problem with this microphone and it's not necessarily a problem. It's a very specific problem, but it is a problem nonetheless. And if you have a Rode PSA1 mic arm, which is obviously what my pod mic is attached to right now, the internal springs are too strong and they won't hold the Fifine microphone in place. No matter what you do in the shock mount, however you mount it, low, high, it will not hold it because these springs, they need something weighty or a counterweight on the end to hold it down. So I tried mounting it in various different positions, but it just did not want to stay. It just flies straight back up at your face. And that's the only thing that I'd say. Fi fine if you could kind of include some counterweights maybe that you could put into the shock mount make the shock mount heavier or weighted in one side, that'll probably be a good workaround. But that did make me curious, and without looking online, I did want to see the weight of both microphones. So first up is the Weighty Boy itself, the Rode Pod Mic. So anyone who's held this or been near one, you know that these things are quite weighty and can be quite heavy for a microphone. But again, a perfect counterbalance for the Rode PSA mic arm. This microphone comes in at 866 grams, and that's just over 30 ounces for my friends over the water. And next is the Fifine K658, which came in as a feather compared to the Rode Pod mic at only 366 grams. Now that is only 11 ounces, just checking my notes, compared to the 30 or over 30 that the pod mic is. Although I will say that if you have a cheaper alternative mic arm, something from eBay or Amazon, one of the ones that have one of the exposed springs on the outside, those mic arms should be fine because I know they're not as tight tension compared to the PSA1, but still the PSA1 is industry standard. So if I find want to be fighting against the big boys, then they really need to kind of step their game up and make sure it's compatible with the PSA1. And to be honest with you, that's only the kind of improvement point that I'd say for Fifine, and that's where they really need to step their game up. The rest of it, it, it's great. The simple plug and play makes it so appealing for anyone getting into the audio space, wanting to upgrade their microphone, or just want to kind of step up their game. And everything else, apart from the PSA1 and mic arm problem, Everything else is really up to standard or above that I expected from a microphone at this price point. Which brings me to my next point. So let's look at the competition. Let's see if we can find a microphone within the £100 bracket that can be easily connected via USB, doesn't need an external amplifier or a mixer. And at the time of filming, the Fifine only has two direct competitors that I could find. The first one being the Blue Yeti microphone, which is owned and made by Logitech. And the second is the Rode NT Mini USB, which is another simple plug and play, you know, just set up straight away in two seconds type USB microphone. So the first thing we have to compare, obviously the Fifine loses this one. First thing we have to compare is, can it be mounted to the Rode PSA1 boom arm? Now the Rode NT USB Mini only weighing in at 585 grams and which apparently is underneath the minimum threshold that Rode even say that you need for this arm. Rode's website claims that it works, so I'm not gonna go against the manufacturer and say, but the weight doesn't add up. So, you know, if they say it works, it works. Hey guys, Future Sloshy here. So when I originally recorded this piece, I said that the Blue Yeti was one kilogram and that it was mountable on the PSA1 mic. Com. But while going through my edit, I actually found out that I was lied to, pretty much. Um, <laughs> basically, I didn't read it correctly, and the stand is one kilogram, the actual mic is not one kg, the mic itself only weighs 550 grams or so, so it's not mountable on the PSA1 mic arm. So unfortunately, the Blue Yeti falls here as well. Simple plug and play for all three of them, without the need for downloading software. Yeah, I mean, on the Blue Yeti, if you want to go into tweaking and EQs and filters, yes, you can download the Logitech G Hub and go crazy with it. But for the most part, three of them, simple plug and play USB, yes. And lastly, of course, because it's a gaming product, we must compare this with everything. Does it have RGB? And for the first time, the Fifine wins this one. It has RGB for the most part, even though it can't be seen. But yes, it does have RGB, the Blue Yeti and the Rode NT Mini USB. Do not have RGB. So gamers galore, go get the five fine. Now, lastly, the final conclusion on this product. Now, me, myself, would I go and purchase this microphone? 
No. And that's not for any bad reasons or something I haven't told you or something that I found out through my testing. It's just I know that I could get a cheaper microphone and through filters and EQs through OBS when I want to record or anything like that. I can pretty much get the same sound from a microphone that is $30 compared to $100. Now, would I get this microphone if I don't know anything about audio, microphone setups or studios or anything like that? Hell yes. This microphone, the simplicity of it is beautiful, honestly. Just plug it in the USB, no filters, no EQs, no software, nothing like that. Simple plug and play. Yes, 100% I would purchase and recommend this microphone to other people. The only thing that I would say is Fifine, if you guys can kind of look into this weight option just so it can be mounted on a Rode PSA1, I would definitely kind of make it so consumers who have a Rode PSA1 in their setup but when I change their microphone, they can then look at the Fifine as being a reasonable option. And this brings me to the end of my review. The Fifine K658 is really a great microphone. The simplicity of it, simple plug and play works great and is really efficient for people who don't know too much about audio and don't really care or want to set up anything kind of crazy or in depth via OBS or anything third party. Thanks again to Fifine for reaching out to me, allowing me to review their product. I hope the review is useful for you guys. Anyone that's looking to purchase this microphone, again, I really would recommend it if you can't be bothered to look into EQing or anything like that and you just want a simple plug and play experience. If you guys did enjoy the video, I would appreciate if you drop a simple thumbs up on the video. It helps me a lot. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell notification. So as soon as I upload a video, you guys are notified. We've got plenty more reviews on the way, hopefully going to be reviewing a lot more stuff sim racing included so if you guys want to see that make sure you hit that sub button in the description you can also find links to all of my social medias and my twitch stream i would appreciate if you guys check them out drop them a follow thanks for watching and hopefully i will catch you guys in the next video take care peace